afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Watch Words. Uh, I'm Tim, and I'm joined by a very special guest in Georgina. Um, do you want to tell a bit about yourself? So, hello, everyone. Thanks for having me, Tim. Uh, my name's Georgina. My Instagram handle is Pens Through the Lens. And Tim has kindly invited me to be on his channel after we met each other at an Oris event. That's wonderful. And I'm just delighted we get to sort of do this in person and uh, interview people. And you know the drill by now. It's your favourite watch, why you love it. And like I said, it's just a lot, lot of love on Instagram. You know, no hate on this, on this channel. It's why you love these watches. And if you want to be a part of it, then, uh, then get in touch. I am going to be talking to you today about the Smiths Everest PRS25. So there's five dial options, but the one that I have is the Silver Jubilee, and that was released last year, um, and that was to celebrate 25 years of selling watches online from the company Time Factors. So it is the first PRS25 to have the Jubilee bracelet. Um, the other models have a rivetless oyster bracelet, and the particular feature of this one is that it has an adventuring dial, which makes it really stand out. Oh, wonderful. Well, tell me about the journey. Like, how did you come to purchase the watch? You know, what, what, what brought you to it? And I, I'd love to know. My partner. So he had the gilt dial and I fell in love with them both. And I think to avoid me stealing them, he decided to surprise me with this at Christmas. Oh, lovely that's a great story it's good it's good when you can get partners and sort of you know loved ones and others sort of into, into the watch game as well um i don't think my other half she fully appreciates me buying all these watches but uh, but there we go it's good that you found a partner in crime that you can share that with yeah i don't know if it's a help or a hindrance our bank account would probably argue for hindrance that we're both into the hobby <laughs> at, least you can at least you can share the memories which is good cool. yeah. so what's your favorite detail about the watch you mentioned about the dial but is that it or, or are there other features that you'd say is your not is your number one thing about the watch that you love um, so adventuring is a type of mineral and it in the light it can go from kind of a deep royal blue to an almost purpley hue but then sometimes if you're in the shadows, it looks almost matte. So it's just absolutely fascinating to have this watch on your wrist. It can be very distracting if you're in meetings or I have been told off at the dinner table when we've been eating outside for stopping the conversation to look at my watch. No, I mean, it almost looks like a constellation of stars. It's really, really catching. You know, when I saw it in the flesh, it's, uh, it's really impressive. Yeah, it has a lot of depth to it. Um, people often call it the little galaxy oh, uh, when they I notice know it. Oh, wonderful. Um, and what else do you like about it? Obviously, you know, we talked to, talked about the dial, but are there any other distinguishing features that, that you really like that you want to point out to, to, to listeners? So I really like the Mercedes hands. So it just gives it that Rolex feel because this is an homage to the Explorer 1016. Um, and another thing that's incredibly popular with these Smith swatches is the loom. The loom goes for days, it's like a torch. Um, but I'd say my favourite thing about it besides those is the fact that Rolex have marketed themselves with the Explorer 6098 as the first watch up Everest, mm. um, when actually it was a Smith's. And I quite like the irony of this being an homage to the Explorer. No, very good. I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I do love the, the Explorer, the, you know, especially the original one and like the tropical dial that you can get hold of, but obviously very, very expensive. But uh, yeah, I mean, and also it's, it's got it's got a lollipop second hand, hasn't it? Which uh, which I quite like as well. So that, that definitely draws it me. It has. Into it. Yeah, so that actually, um, of all my watches, having that lollipop second hand it's the easiest to set the time if you want to hack the seconds just because it extends all the way out to the track and it's so thin that it's easy to stop it dead on 12. So if you're a bit anal about setting the time like I am, that is a great feature. Is, yeah, I mean, there's an Omega Speedmaster 300 that I love um, and it's got the lollipop hand, but uh, it is a tad expensive, but I, I do fall quite hard for those lollipop hands. So just talking about the, I suppose, you know, going back to the watch itself, is there anything you would change? And it's obviously controversial when it's, you know, a watch that's very close to you, but is there one thing you would change about it if I were to put you on the spot? 
So instantly I would make it slimmer. So this is quite a tall watch at 11.3 mm -hmm. millimeters tall, going up to the top of the sapphire crystal. And it sits quite heftily on the hand. Uh, on a bigger wrist, it looks a little bit slimmer, mm -hmm. but it has quite a lot of weight. You definitely know you're wearing it. So that would be one thing that I would change. I would also maybe opt for shorter lugs. So this comes up at 43 and a half millimeter lug to lug. So that's Speedmaster territory nearly. Mm, definitely. Very good. And I suppose one of the questions I always sort of ask uh, people that come up, come on here is, is it the brand in particular or is it the watch in particular that sort of made you fall hard for it? I think what I love is that this is a British brand. Uh, so Smiths were creating watches in the 50s mm -hmm. for a while, and then they've been resurrected. Um, I believe they have a factory in Sheffield, and I know the photographer who works for them. So it feels, um, feels like you're really celebrating British watch heritage just by owning one, by wearing one by talking about them to other people in the hobby. But of all the Smiths models, I really enjoy the Everest PRS 25. I think it's a fantastic watch and I fell in love with it as soon as I saw it. No, excellent. I mean, again, um, you know, you, you, you're selling it hard to me and uh, I'm quite convinced actually, you know, it's good to support, also good to support the Brits. and. Uh, I think that particular watch as well, it's harking back to an, an, an earlier time. And uh, I do quite like my vintage watches, as, as, as you well know. So I think it definitely sounds like you, you like the brand and the watch at the same time. So just sort of, you know, moving on, you know, when you wear it, how does it make you feel? You say that it you know, can almost make you daydream and sort of distract you. But, uh, you know, when you do wear it, um, you know, like I said, how does it make you feel? So I'd say when I saw this question, Tim, I thought, what's the first word that pops to mind? And it makes you, it does make you feel quite special. This particular variant of the PRS 25, but there were only 500 of these made. Oh, really? Wow, I didn't realise so that. Yeah, so it's limited edition. This one's all sold out now. So when I look at my wrist, um, I just think I've got this amazing little constellation of stars on my wrist and only 499 other people on this planet have one. Um, and that makes it really quite cool. Yeah, no, that's a pretty neat way of, of saying it um, and putting it. Yeah, uh, I think I think I'm very jealous now. Um, and sort of, <laughs> where, where, <laughs> sorry, that's all right. But uh, what, where, you know, where do you love wearing it as well? You know, could could you wear it all the time, or is there like a particular place where you must wear the watch, whether it's going out or whether it's going to work? You know, um, you know, like I said, where do you love wearing it? So I actually particularly love to wear this one when I'm traveling or when I'm out. Uh, in nature, I think because it just harks to the heritage of the watch, because it is inspired by the explorer. Um, and I just love, you know, I go to work in Cumbria quite often. I like walking up the hills, looking down, seeing that 369 on the dial. Um, and it just makes you feel connected both to the watch and its heritage. No, lovely. And obviously you are pens through the lens. So do you think you'll be moving more into taking some nature shots, um, you know, with, with the watch when you talked about going to Cumbria? So I would like to actually delve more into nature photography with the watches. I think I've held back because of the sheer reflective nature of outside. But certainly I think to capture the spirit of the watch, that should be my next move. So you yeah. might see that on my page soon. Sounds really, really good, you know, especially for the listeners and, and, and people on, you know, your Instagram feed. You know, I've, I've tried that a few times as well, you know, when I've been on my Vespa or, you know, when I've been out to sort of a lot of nature in Buckinghamshire where I'm from. So uh, I definitely encourage it. Uh, and then the final question I've got is, you know, why should people own a watch, uh, you know, this watch, uh, you know, like because this? Because firstly, it's affordable. You can pick up um, the black dial, the white dial the gilt dial for £325 and you're getting a lot of watch. Um, so it's budget friendly. It looks much more expensive than it is. Um, and it now comes with the option to purchase the Jubilee bracelet. 
which is solid end links, it's stainless steel, so it's good quality. Um, it has a really fun and interesting history. Um, you know, they're durable. So I'm one of these people who knocks my watch every day on my desk and it has, hasn't got so much as a dent on it, no scratches. That's impressive. And I just think they're, they're really, really great. No. Oh. Brilliant. Um, yeah, I, I go around almost like a plaster cast on mine. I don't get any dents on it. So um, it's good to know <laughs> that, that, that a watch like this is, is dent proof. Um, Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Georgina, for this. It was absolutely fantastic sort of to go through, talk about your favourite watch and start highlights. And, and it was just a really great time to sort of, you know, to have you on the show. So thanks very much. Thanks for having me. Wonderful. And if you want to get involved, like I said, uh, you know, at the beginning, you know, to find me on Watchword uh, and we can interview about your favourite watch, um, you know, two, three minutes. And that's the sort of videos that we want. So thank you and listen out for more for the next episode. Thanks. Bye.